am really in love with this first project and what I used was this hanging light bulb, some batteries from the dollar store, and then the additional supplies were just some yarn and a hot glue gun and I did use a little bit of spray paint. So I found this hanging LED light bulb, of course it was just a dollar, you open it up, you insert a couple of batteries in there, um, and then basically what you do is you pull the string and the, the light bulb lights up. And this light isn't super bright, but it's actually, I tested it at nighttime, it's like a perfect reading light. So if you were to have it by your bed or something, it's a great thing to just like pull on and basically read with or whatever you want to do with it and so what I started off by doing was just masking off the actual light bulb area because originally I was going to put yarn around this area but I wanted it to be able to have the batteries removed and put back in if they needed to be changed so I ended up just using a 14 karat brass spray paint which you guys all know my love for this spray paint I think it looks so good it really transforms anything and makes it look so expensive so I sprayed the little battery slot piece and then also the other piece and what I'm now doing is creating the cord for it. So I'm just creating a loop initially, as you can see on the screen here. And what I'm doing is a chain stitch. So I'm just putting my two fingers through and then pulling through the um, excess yarn. And the excess yarn is actually just attached to the entire like little ball of yarn, I guess you could say. And I'm just pulling it through and sort of creating this chain. And the reason I'm doing this is because I didn't just want to hang my LED light. I don't know why I'm calling it LED light, my light bulb, essentially just from a piece of yarn. I thought that was boring. I really wanted to create more of like a cording or a rope. So that's exactly what I'm doing here. And this is super easy. It took me like maybe three minutes to make a two foot long section of this. You can go really, really quick. After you get the hang of it, it goes really quickly. So I just pulled through and created this nice little chain stitch yarn piece which is going to act as a cord and when you get to the end all you need to do is cut off and then put that tail end through the loop and pull it and that actually just finishes off your chain stitch there and this is going to be the cording that I'm going to be using for my hanging light and then what I'm doing is just pulling off that little masking area with the tape and the paper towel and this reveals the look and then I just cut that black string because the black string was just kind of ugly it wasn't my favorite thing and I glued onto the black string the cord that we created and I made sure just to leave a little bit of excess black string hanging out that way um, you have a lot to glue on and there's a lot of like surface area for it to really stick and grasp onto and lastly just to finish off this project I really wanted to wrap the corded section because I didn't like how the black string was showing so I used a little bit of yarn and I just simply wrapped around this entire section covering the uh, cord that we created along with the black cord that was initially there and you just have to do small sections of hot glue and just do small little wrappings each time um, it's a little bit tedious, but once you finish it, it looks amazing. It looks very finished and polished. And honestly, this looks like it was made uh, like at West Elm or created at Pottery Barn or something. It just looks really, really nice and pretty. And you can make these extremely long and hang them from the ceiling, whatever it may be. And you guys, honestly, this project probably cost me $1.50. So super affordable. All you have to do is pull a little cording and that turns your light on and you're good to go. This project is really fun and I actually used miniature wooden tables I found at the craft section in the, the dollar store. How random is that? But that's probably why they were there. And I also used a hot glue gun, white paint, and a paintbrush. I laid a little bit of parchment paper down just so that my uh, surface didn't get dirty, peeled off all those little barcodes on the bottom, and gave a nice white coating of paint to all the little tables here. And I do want to mention that you guys, the Target brand white paint is actually so good. Like as you can see, it gets such a nice coat. Like I did one coat on these entire uh, little tables here and it really gave them a full opaque white coat. So if you're looking for a good white paint, check out Target in their little craft section area. The white paint there is really, really nice. And this was kind of tedious. I did have to go in um, and go around all the legs and the underside and all that little stuff, but I thought it was so random how they had little wooden tables at the dollar store. But then I was thinking to myself, it's probably because nobody wants a little wooden table, but you know, I do. So I grabbed four of them and I'm gonna make it into a miniature shelf, which I'm actually gonna be using in my bathroom area to store a lot of my uh, samples that I get from brands that are sent. So they're always such small little things that I throw into a drawer, but I'd love to have them out and be able to actually see them. So once you have your little miniature tables painted fully white, um, you can paint them whatever color you want. I'm just using a little bit of hot glue on all four legs and I'm going to be stacking them. This part, pretty self-explanatory. If you watch what I'm doing, just adding a little bit of glue to the bottom and stacking them. You can use a stronger glue like E6000 or something if you plan to use a heavier item on this. And then you can also go in at the end with a little bit of white paint and just touch up any areas you might have missed or just go over the glue spots if there are any. And that finishes off your shelf. Next 
next up, we're just gonna upcycle some simple glass vessels from the dollar store. The dollar store always has a lot of glass items for, of course, a dollar. So I use those. I use a little bit of masking tape, Elmer's glue, paint, and a paintbrush as well. So what I started off by doing was taking this larger, sort of like watercraft, sort of a vessel, I guess you could say, and I used a little bit of masking tape to go around. And you can really mask off whatever you want, but this is just going to create a very clean line when we do our painting, and we're gonna be creating a frosted glass look using just Elmer's glue and paint. So what you need to do is get a small little disposable cup, put um, a good amount of Elmer's glue in there because this is going to act as your paint. And then I also added a couple drops of gold paint into this one, but you can add whatever you want. It could be gold paint, um, any color paint really. And the more paint you add, the more opaque it's gonna be. And another tip is that if you guys use food coloring, you actually get a fully frosted look. So that's another great tip. But I really wanted like a gold shimmer to the bottom of this, really to match my living room area. So what I did was just dip into the Elmer's glue. And what I suggest you guys when you do this is to do a very thin coat as I'm doing here on this project. This vessel here actually turned out really, really nice. But the second one that I'm gonna show you that I did, it did turn out um, a little unexpected because I did add so much of the paint to it. I wanted to see what was gonna happen, but it ended up actually like running and then having a little bit of like drip marks and it just wasn't as pretty. So I definitely suggest doing like a nice thin coat to wherever you wanna do it to. Once it's dry, it becomes fully frosted and it looks so pretty. It has a gold shimmer in there. And this is that second one I was mentioning. What I did was use a little bit more paint this time to make it a little bit more opaque, um, mixed with the Elmer's glue, of course. And I painted it onto this glass vessel here. I don't know why I keep saying vessel. It's like a container or a vase or something. And then um, I did a really thick layer on this one because I wanted to see how it was gonna turn out, but it ended up drying a little bit more splotchy, but honestly, it kind of gave it like a very like marled effect. And you're gonna leave them to dry for about an hour and that finishes off this project. last one is the most creative for sure and I used a slate tray, a little plate, three different mason jars, and a fidget spinner. Yes, a fidget spinner. And I also use a hot glue gun, some cardboard, and scissors. And you're going to see exactly what I'm going to do. But first off, I'm going to cut six little one by one inch squares from the cardboard. And these are actually going to be what I'm going to call spacers, I guess you can call them. And you'll see what I'm going to use them for in just a couple of seconds here. And what I did was cut six of those out. Then I went and removed moved the barcode from the bottom and I glued the fidget spinner, just the center section to the bottom of the plate. And I would honestly suggest you guys use like a, an E6000 or like a more strong bond adhesive, but I am just doing this for a time sake in the video. And then what I did was I used hot glue and I glued together all my squares. So I did this for um, three of them. So I had basically sandwich squares and the sandwich squares are actually going to be going on the three sections of the spinner. And this is going to to make it so that when we glue the slate tray on top, it actually sits higher than that center section. And if you do get any glue in the center, which I actually did, just let it dry and then you can use your scissors to scrape it out. And then it, of course it spins really nicely. Uh, and what you're gonna need to do with this is you're going to then need to glue your slate tray or whatever it is that you wanna glue on top of it. That's like a nice larger surface. Use a lot of glue and because the cardboard is porous and because the slate tray is porous, it's actually stuck really, really nicely. You're just gonna stick that on top, plop it down and you have a now revolving tray. I know. And you could put on top of it your uh, little mason jars that you got. And inside of that, you could actually store like makeup brushes, makeup, perfumes, Q-tips, um, little circular cotton rounds, whatever it may be. And it's a great tabletop accessory. first project, I am using these metal S hooks I got at the dollar store. I'm going to use a couple of each size. My dollar store actually had two different sizes, the larger and the smaller, and I thought they were perfect for this project. So I went ahead and used a little bit of gold liquid leaf, which is so pretty. You can find this in the paint section at the craft store. It's normally hanging on the wall um, and it's like a gold liquid leaf. They have it in brass and many other colors as well. And then I also got a wooden dowel at Michael's for probably a dollar or two. And I actually painted this black using just a nice coat of black paint. Um, and this is going to act as the raw that's kind of going 
going to hold our S hooks because I'm essentially creating like a S hook leather, almost CB2-esque organizer. It's so pretty in the end, I swear. And then I'm using a little bit of faux leather and I'm going to use a ruler just to create one inch strips of this faux leather. Then once I was done creating this one inch strips with a pencil, I went in with a pair of scissors and just cut those out. And then what we're gonna be doing with these one inch strips is actually folding them in half and cutting them. So in the end, it was about a four by one inch strip and I created, I think like eight or nine of these. However many S hooks you have, you're essentially going to want to have one leather strip for each. And then you're also gonna to wanna to have two additional ones for the ending piece. So what you're gonna do next is fold it in half and then just mark where you're gonna want your hole to be and use a pair of scissors just to create a hole. If you do have like a leather hole punch or something, that would definitely be better. But I didn't have one of those. I'm just gonna use a pair of scissors to create that hole. And then you're going to push your golden S hook through and just look how pretty those gold S hooks are. They turned out so nicely. So you're just folding it over, using the pencil, creating a hole um, and then gluing them down on either side just to make sure it stays. You can also paint the rod whatever color you want as well. So you could do it like white or gold or black as I did. And then you're also gonna want two leather loops for each end. And those are gonna act as like the little um, sections that you can actually nail through onto the wall to hang it up. All right, so jumping into project number two, I'm using what's known as a peat pot. I found these at the dollar store. You get 16 of them for a dollar, but they're basically just like little uh, seed potters that you like use to pot plant seeds and they kind of grow from here and then you can like plant them in like a larger area. But I thought I would use it to create like an organizational item. So what I'm using is a ruler and a pencil and I'm just going around the bottom edge and marking one inch up from the bottom, um, a couple marks around the edge just so I have a guide for when I'm going in and using a pair of scissors right now. I'm cutting down to that one inch mark and then I'm gonna cut all the way around just as evenly as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I just tried to make it as even as possible. And the more marks you do, the more even it's gonna be. And I kind of rolled down that top edge a little bit just so it wasn't super blunt and like just cut. And I repeated this process and I created a total of nine of these little one inch tall cups. And you can also just use these like peat pots. Like <laughs> that's, that's the proper name of them. So I'm just gonna refer to them as that around your house, just as like organizational cups as well. If you would like to, they're really nice, like almost biodegradable sort of cardboard-esque containers, which I like. And once I have them completely cut out, I did a total of nine of them. You can also do more than this. And then I'm going in using that gold leaf paint that I used in the last project. And I'm kind of just dry brushing this on each of the little containers. I'm not going in perfectly uh, like painting the whole thing and making sure every part of the surface is covered. I'm actually just kind of dry brushing it on there and letting the gold sort of hit the more high points of the cardboard material. and the low points are sort of just the original cardboard because I liked that almost rustic kind of anthropology-esque vibe that it was giving me. So that's exactly what I did. And then I used a little bit of hot glue just to roughly glue together all of these containers. And then on the back side is where I added a lot of glue on each of the joints just to make sure that it was nice and sturdy. And I went around the edge and kind of gave it a gilded look as well, just dry brushing on that gold leaf all the way around the edges and the sides. And then I also just felt like the inside needed it too. I kind of just gold leafed it out. And then in the end, you have this jewelry organizer. <laughs> Now this next project is pretty simple. Um, I'm not gonna lie, it's a very easy DIY, but I just wanted to share it with you because I needed something like this for my bathroom too and I thought I would share it with you. So what I got was this little acrylic organizer at the dollar store, it was actually $2, do not tell anybody, but oh well, I bought it anyways. And I'm using these small little wooden beads I got at Michael's Craft Store and I'm using the same gold paint once again. As you can see, like I'm just obsessed with brass, but you can use any color that you want. Like you can use a gold, a silver, rose gold, whatever matches your own personal home decor. And I'm painting each of these little uh, beads with the gold paint and these are going to act as feet and handle for the box so we're just kind of taking what's already there on the box and just amplifying it a bit more so i'm using some e6000 adhesive and i'm gluing on the feet on all four corners of the bottom side and i'm also gluing on the top center of the lid uh the little piece as well and this is going to create a lid and then some feet for your box it just amplifies the look a little bit more Yay, I'm so excited to write this project. I think this one's my favorite one in the video. So I am using these dollar store plastic bins. I got three of them. They are actually like a almost translucent dark gray plastic material. And I just wanted to give them a tiny bit of a new look. You guys are gonna be like, what did you even do? I'm giving them a coat of a flat black spray paint. So this is gonna give them a, a matte look, which I think really intensified the almost look of them. It really created a, a more expensive look, I think for sure. Because before they just kind of looked like an actual dollar store basket, but when they're really dark matte black, it actually 
actually looks pretty nice. And then what I'm going to do is use a little bit of that faux leather I used in my last project, and I'm gonna create some handles for these little baskets. So we're kind of just amplifying the look of the basket a little bit to make it look a lot more expensive than their traditional $1 price point. And I'm cutting these out to the handle width. So you're gonna have to kind of measure your own basket to see what you have. And I'm cutting it out to the width of the handle, and I'm also going to be cutting it out to like be able to fold over the handle, but also have a little excess. I wanted almost to have like a pull tab handle, which sounds odd, but I thought it just kind of gave a little bit of it a better look as opposed to just wrapping it only around the handle. It makes it a little bit more luxurious looking for sure. And I thought this looked like a really nice CB2 basket you would see at Target in like a set of three or at CB2 for like $25, $30, but we made them for like probably $4 for all three of these. And I'm gluing down all of the uh, leather pieces on the ends of each of the baskets. I thought it would be fun to organize these in a way where you can stack them and then access each basket by just pulling them off. love how cost effective this DIY is and I'm using these tool hooks I found at the dollar store of course and you get five of them in a pack but I was like okay we can use these as like towel hooks um, any form of like organizational wall storage you need you can use this hook for that so it's an ugly metal material to start because of course you would normally use this in like a garage or something but I'm going to cover them in some hemp cording so I'm using just some basic hemp cording I got at the craft store and I'm using hot glue to just wrap this hemp cording all the way around the entire metal surface of this hook and and create literally a $24 anthropology hook. Like guys, we have all seen these there. We've wanted to buy them, but we haven't because we realized that like spending $24 on a hook is not the best for our bank accounts. I mean, I've definitely done it before, so I'm not gonna pretend like I haven't, but I think we all exactly know what I'm talking about. So I'm going in with some hot glue and some hemp cording and I'm going around this wall hook. And if you keep in mind, this was a dollar, you get five of them in a pack. This cost me probably with all the materials used 75 cents to create this wall hook. So I just really love how cost effective and easy this project is. It's also super quick too. So you can make a ton of these, give them to your friends. I mean, here you go, here's a wall hook. I don't know exactly what they're gonna do with it. You never know. So um, I just created these. This is a before and the after, super cost effective and fun. And I also painted the screws gold. That way when you screw it in the wall, it just sort of matches the vibe. And we are on to the last project. This one is another super simple one, but I just wanted to give you guys the idea that when you're in the dollar store, check the holiday aisles, check the Easter aisle, the Valentine aisle, whatever it may be. You can find some stuff that you can actually use and repurpose into really amazing home decor. So I found these Easter baskets. I broke the handles off of the Easter basket and you get two for a dollar after Easter. So it was only 50 cents each. I used a little bit of chalky finish spray paint and I went ahead and I just sprayed this on the entire basket. And I had to do about two to three coats of the spray paint to cover up the other ugly orange, pink, and green wicker element of this basket. But in the end, it ended up looking really, really nice. And the chalky finish kind of gave it a matte look, which I also really liked. It wasn't glossy or anything. So it kind of looks like the wicker was naturally this color to start off with. And then we ended up with this really pretty cream toned basket. And then I used a little bit of black paint and a paintbrush to paint around the top edge of the basket. I just thought it added a nice touch to it instead of leaving it plain. But as you can see, we took an Easter basket, a simple, colorful, bright Easter basket and turned it into a storage basket. And you can put this in your bathroom. You can put it in your bedroom, wherever you need to store items. This is a great way to sort of repurpose a basket that you may already have.